This power station is breaking into new territory with a feature I've not yet seen in a power station, and I have reviewed a number of them. This is the new EcoFlow River 3 Plus. It's got a sleek look and some solid features. I'll show you them. But the new feature is that it can meet the 10 millisecond UPS standard, and it has the ability to have a direct connection with that device that you're backing up for example, a network area server. It also has a unique feature that I haven't seen on other EcoFlow devices where it has pogo pin connections on the bottom that allow you to connect an expansion battery. This one has two different options. And that expansion battery can add even more features than just more storage. First, let's do a tour of the unit. The screen is EcoFlow's sort of new design. State of charge is still in the middle, input and output. There's a number of colored icons and animations on there. There are two USB-A ports one USB-C port at 100 watts output only. It cannot charge by the USB-C port, and I wish they had more USB-C ports on here, but there are one, two, three AC outputs, obviously two on the back. The total inverter output is 600 watts across the AC ports, and then if you add all the DC ports, the total output for the River 3 Plus is 850 watts of total output. Of course, there's a 12 volt car port right here. And then down at the bottom, there's this light bar. Pretty cool looking. It's very bright. Two modes and then a flashing mode. On the side is the intake and exhaust fans. Handle at the top makes it easy to pick up and carry around. And then back here, there's a little door you can slide down. This is the input and communication section. Here's where the wall AC goes in, solar, or car charger, and then this port right here is used for the UPS feature. And then on the bottom, there's this cover that you can take off, and this is where it can connect into the extra battery. So one of the things the River 3 Plus is aiming to take on is this guy. This is a traditional UPS. It has a sealed lead acid battery inside of it, where the River 3 Plus has the lithium iron phosphate batteries. Both of these have the ability to connect up to your device with a USB-A on the other end and then the USB-B on the end of the device. So this is a very popular uh, manufacturer right here and it connects directly into my network area server. And the point of that is that when the, there's a power outage and then it switches over to providing power to the disk drives with the battery backup, I want those drives to power down before it completely loses power so that none of my data is at risk. So on your traditional UPS, you'll see a port like this, a USB-B on the River 3 Plus. There's the same one on the back and it even comes with the cable that you can plug in here and on the other end, plug in your device. This, again, this is a USB-A. EcoFlow has software to manage this UPS connection, but unfortunately the Mac OS version hasn't been released yet, so I haven't been able to test it, but it will be great to be able to set the auto shutdown of my disk drives on my network area server if there was a power outage. I don't have the ability to measure the 10 milliseconds or not, but I do have an LED light and I'm very curious to see, will it flicker when we turn off the grid. So there's a, say there's a power outage and let's see here if this flickers. Three, two, one. Very small amount of flicker. Oh, and look at that. This light goes on, I guess, to indicate that there's been a power outage and it's running off of battery now. Let's find out how much it weighs. I'm using the AC inverter to power my scale. So the River 3 Plus comes in at 10 pounds, 11 ounces. The River 3 Plus by itself has 286 watt hours of storage capacity, lithium iron phosphate batteries, very long lasting chemistry. If you get the expansion battery right here, this is the EB600, it adds another 572 watt hours for a total of 858 watt hours in this package right here. Super easy to connect up the River 3 Plus to the extra battery. There's a little lip in the front hook it on there and then just push it down and those pogo pins connect. When this battery is connected in there, you can basically treat this as one power station with the handle. To undo this one, you push this down and you could lift up and then it's free. And with the expansion battery connected, we're up to 23 pounds, eight ounces. All right, now let's talk about charging by solar power. The River 3 Plus can handle up to 220 watts of solar power. What I have right here is a 220 watt bifacial solar panel, also from EcoFlow, but you can use any solar panel that you want that fits under these specifications. Currently, it is making 
173 watts or so. You can see the later day sun, you can just tell by the, the angle here. And if it was to be making 220 watts, say it was like pure sun over 1000 watts per meter squared in terms of irradiance, it's full potential. 220 watts here on a 286 watt portable power station means that it could charge from zero to 100% in about two hours or so. Uh, so you can fill this whole thing up just by sunlight. It uses an XT60 input in the back and then has MC4 connections to the solar panels. The River 3 Plus by itself has a maximum input of 360 watts and is supposed to fully charge in about an hour at this rate after letting the unit sit at 0% for 12 hours or so. The fastest charge time that I got was one hour and three minutes. So a little surprising since EcoFlow usually meets or exceeds their stated charging times. But something else that's surprising is how quiet it is. It has the gallium nitride transistors and the design that the Delta Pro 3 has to keep the unit more efficient and the fan noise very low. I'm gonna record this without an external microphone or any other adjustments just my phone you can see the fan is spinning there it's been outputting between five and six hundred watts for several minutes and just to give you a sense of the fan noise so I can hear the fan going in this very quiet room but just barely now let's talk about outputs. The River 3 Plus has those three AC outlets. They can do a combined total of 600 watts of continuous output. Pretty good for a small little device like this. Let's turn it on. I have a 600 watt load on here and let's see how it does. So it's been about a minute and the fans just came on. You can see we're running near our maximum of 600 watts of output. And even though the fans are on, they're very quiet. I would say most power stations, when you're outputting at your maximum through the AC ports, the fan's gonna be much louder than this. So it did run fine for about five minutes or so at its maximum. So now let's try pushing it over its maximum and see what happens. All right, just went into overload and that was 45 seconds. So 45 seconds at 650 watts of continuous output. All right, now let's try that 650 watt load again with the extra battery and see what happens. All right, so this time it made it about a minute before it went into overloads. For the AC efficiency test to see how much usable power you get from the inverter, I used a 300 watt constant load from 100% down to zero, and I got about an 86% efficiency. So one of the things the River 3 Plus by itself can't do is that it can't charge from the USB-C port. You can see I have it plugged in, there's zero watts of input. But with the expansion battery and this USB-C port down here, this is an input and output port at 140 watts. So let me plug that in and let's see what happens. So check it out. We're getting about 140 watts of input into this whole system all through this USB-C port down here. And down here in the extra battery where it's charging, there is a bit of a status indication with this LED light bar. It's solid over here, darker over here, giving us a sense of the state of charge and it's blinking to show us that it is charging. All right, now let's find out if you can charge by solar and wall AC at the same time. I have a 45 watt solar panel over there producing about 24 watts or so. So let's turn on wall AC, which is actually gonna come from the River 3. A little bonus here, you can see the, the size difference between the River 3, River 3 Plus. I have the River 3 Plus set at an input of 250 watts so that combined with the solar panel should give us about you know 270 watts of input. So if we take a look at the screen, both icons, the solar and the wall AC are on, and you can see we're about 277 watts or so. So that means this one's providing 250, and that one's providing about 25 watts. So yes, it can dual charge. So check out this input wattage here, 730 watts. I'm able to achieve that because it can dual charge. Wall AC in the back of this unit and about 100 watts or so coming in through this USB-C port. This is a 100 watt rated cable. So you can do that if you have the extra battery charged by wall AC and DC at the same time. So when you have the extra battery attached, you can ramp up the charging all the way on the slider to 650 watts. So it's moving closer to 650 watts. There's another icon that just came up on the screen called Xtreme. That's just telling us it's going as fast as it can to charge the batteries. So in the app, there's a slider that you can use to change the range of how fast you want it to charge. You need the extra battery to charge at the maximum 650 watts. Otherwise, when it's by itself, you can only get 380 watts maximum. But the thing that's interesting is that look at the level of precision you can get here. It's down to the watt itself. So I have 441 watts. And so take a look at the screen. It'll drop to try to match that. 
usually on that slider, it's in either increments of 100 watts or 50 watts. So I don't know why you'd need that level of precision, but that's great that they give it to you. So you can use the extra battery as a USB-C input and output by itself at 140 watts. For example, I have my OEM cable plugged into the USB-C port running my MacBook. In general, this works just fine as an input and output port, but there is one scenario I found a little bit of a glitch. It's this one where I'm using this OEM cable to charge my MacBook. Sometimes the charging, you can see the light is on right there, but sometimes it will cycle off and then cycle back on. And this only happens when it's charging. When it's at full charge at 100%, it works just fine. And oh, look, it just went off right now. So I think what's going on here is there's a bit of an issue with the voltage negotiation on the USB-C in here. So this power cycling issue with the USB-C, you can see it turned off and it'll turn back on in a couple of seconds. So it turns on and off, it eventually charges it. Hopefully they can fix that with a firmware upgrade because if you use this USB-C port on the River 3 Plus, it works just fine. The EcoFlow smartphone app is very nice as it usually is. On this one, you can see the percentage of the extra battery as well as the overall state of charge, input and output, and you can toggle on and off various things. Down here, you can see that I'm using the extra battery USB-C port to run my computer. And I just showed you how sometimes it'll cycle on and off. Right now, it's actually working just fine. And then the other thing that I like is in here, there's all kinds of settings you can go through, input and output settings. Here's those that slider I was showing you earlier. And then obviously firmware update, and you can click a button and update your firmware. Check the link below for any deals or coupons that I have on the River 3 Plus, and thank you for watching.